Wait, we're at the Enterprise right now. This is where Mark Twain wrote The Jumping Frog of Calaveras County, right within these very walls. Now, Mark Twain was only here for about, oh, about two, two and a half years. And then he moved on to San Francisco, wrote other great, tremendous books such as Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. But it all started here. I actually heard that Mark Twain was asked to leave Virginia City. Well, I think he was the one that started that rumor. Uh, he was always the colorful one for making up stories. He never let the truth get in the way of a good yarn. He tried, he tried gold mining, but uh, he, all, all he, he and his friend succeeded in doing, his partner doing, was they, they found a big hole in the ground. Later on, when, when, uh, when, when the big strikes were discovered, they needed the bigger equipment in order to draw it out of the ground. This wasn't like California where the, where the, the gold was lying in the bed of a creek or on the side of a, a little hillside or anything. You really had to go deep. They had to dig deep. They, they needed the big equipment. That's why they needed the, the uh, Bonanza Kings, Flood, Ferry, Mack, and O'Brien, because they were the only ones that had the, the cash to afford all this elaborate digging equipment. Okay. Let's, let's go downstairs. There he is, there's Mark Twain. Was this where he worked? This was the actual desk right here that Mark Twain worked at. Mm. Of course, nobody gets to touch it anymore. It's a kind of a sanctu sanctuary. And these are these items, did they belong to Mark Twain? or? No, I, actually, he was just a poor, poor old working stiff, mm. working for the Territorial Enterprise, writing mm. stories and making the miners laugh. God, God knows they needed it for the, as hard as they worked down there. Mm. So these are just items then from... Well, he, he was a typesetter as well. He was, oh. he was a typesetter. In other words, you'd have all the iron pieces here with all the letters on it, and he would mechanically pick each one of them out to write his stories, because sometimes you have to do everything yourself. I think that still applies today. Absolutely. If you want it done right, do it yourself. And that's what he did. <laughs> This is the old printing press that he used right here. Mm -hmm. Now this was hand cranked. You, you had to have yourself some little kid or somebody else. There was no such thing as electricity in, in those days. For you young. I know you're a mature guy, but how did he ever get out here if he's from Missouri? <laughs> it's, it's the story goes that when the, when, when the South declared war, uh -huh. or it depends on where you're from, I guess, who, who declared war on who. Right. But, <laughs> but uh, he joined, he joined the, the, the Confederate Army for a brief period. From Missouri, huh? Uh, 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 just about from the first battle, he, he realized that he was not a soldier. Mm -hmm. And so he hightailed it west uh, uh, across, the, oh, uh, across the Mississippi. And, and thank God he did pursue a, a, a profession that he was much more uh -huh. qualified for. And, uh, now this here, the letter press, this one was powered by a water wheel. Obviously it would be way too big for, for someone to, to try and mechanically turn, turn a crank on this one. So they had a water wheel coming from a small stream up on, Sun, uh, up on Sun Mountain. And that would just move this whole thing. But it must have made quite a bit of noise back in those days. Sure it did. What is this? Was that like a telegraph machine? or? I think this was more like a cash register. Oh. Let me hold on for a second. Hmm. No, this was an adding machine from the turn of the century. Oh. And obviously the phone right there, that, that was from more like the, the, the 30s and 40s. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, they would. And here's another type of adding machine, obviously. <laughs> 